Hey everyone, welcome to tutorial 21. In this video, I've decided to cover some introductory approaches to frequency modulation synthesis, usually just called FM for short. FM refers to a synthesis configuration in which the output signal of one oscillator, called the modulator, is used to offset the frequency of another oscillator, called the carrier. This is a really simple concept, but as we'll see in this video, FM is capable of creating a really impressive variety of sound that ranges from pure sine waves to dense, complex, and chaotic spectra, all of which can be generated from as few as two oscillators. In classic FM, the carrier and the modulator are both sine waves, so that's a good place for us to start. Let's boot the server and also launch our scope and frequency analyzer utilities so that we can see what we're dealing with as we hear it. Here's a sound we've heard many times in this tutorial series, a lovely sine wave with a fixed frequency of 500 hertz, amplitude scaled down by 0.2, and invoking multi-channel expansion so that we hear it in both speakers. This will be our carrier oscillator, and the conventional way of introducing FM is to simply add another audio rate oscillator to the carrier frequency like this. This will be our modulator. Initially, I'll set its frequency to be one hertz, and for right now, that's the only thing I'll specify. Right off the bat, this sounds like basically the exact same thing we just heard, but we can see just the tiniest bit of left-right movement on our visuals, indicating that the frequency of the carrier is oscillating. If we don't specify otherwise, the output range of a sine OSC UGEN is between negative one and positive one, which means the frequency of the tone we're listening to is fluctuating between 499 and 501 hertz. And this is like just enough deviation for our ears to notice a change. It's sort of right on the threshold of perception. But to get more substantial variation in the carrier frequency, all we have to do is amplify the modulating oscillator. And the simplest way to do this is to specify a value for its mull argument. With mull at 20, the carrier ranges from 480 to 520 hertz. Definitely wide enough to notice. And with mull at 400, we get a very generous range, sweeping from 100 all the way up to 900 hertz. So technically we're already doing FM, but we haven't gotten into the really interesting stuff yet. All we've done for now is just make this wacky, exaggerated vibrato effect. So let's increase the modulator frequency, little by little. So instead of one hertz, here's two hertz. Four hertz. Eight hertz. Now I'm gonna go ahead and replace this static value with mouse X, so that the horizontal screen position of the cursor controls the modulator frequency, starting at one hertz on the left edge and two kilohertz at the right edge and one for the third argument of mouse X specifies an exponential mapping. Uh, we'll also pull these values so we can see them in the post window. And listen carefully because there's a very interesting transformation that occurs as the modulator frequency crosses into the audible spectrum somewhere around 20 hertz, give or take a little. It's a pretty wild sound. This line of code is similar to one of the examples in the sine OSC help file. The syntax is a little different, but the concept is exactly the same. And this was actually one of the first sounds I ever made in Super Collider, like 12 years ago, when all I knew how to do was boot the server and run help file examples. And I remember it just completely broke my brain. I had no idea what I was hearing or that sounds like this could exist. No clue what was going on, it was great. So if you are similarly excited by this kind of sound and just wanna mess around, 
you can, for example, substitute some more unit generators and just see what happens. For example, let's use mouse Y for the carrier frequency and pull that as well. And let's use a non-interpolating noise generator for modulator amplitude, generating new values eight times a second, which can range from 20 to 10,000. So that's uh, really fun. Endless hours of entertainment. Uh, but this line of code is kind of long, not very readable, hard to tell at a glance what's going on. So real quick, for good practice, let's revisit concepts from tutorial 3 and convert this function into a synth def so that we can treat it more like a blueprint for a sound rather than a sort of fixed sound object. For arguments, we need a carrier frequency, a modulator frequency, and a modulator amplitude. I'm just gonna give these some arbitrary but sensible default values. We also need variables to keep a reference to our carrier and modulator oscillators. Our modulator is a sine wave running at mod hertz scaled by mod amp. And our carrier, also a sine wave, is running at a frequency determined by carrier hertz plus the modulator signal. And for now, we'll keep our fixed amplitude scaling like we had before and our multi-channel expansion. Make sure to add an out unit generator and add the synth def to the audio server. With default argument values, it sounds like this. Now, revisiting concepts from tutorial four, it would make a lot of sense to add an amplitude envelope so that every FM sound we create has a beginning and an end, so it doesn't just go on forever. I'm just gonna do a basic percussive envelope with an attack and release. Uh, let's turn this point two into an actual amplitude argument so that we have some basic volume control if we wanna use it. And for fun, let's add a pan argument so that we can position each FM sound in the stereo field. So we'll remove our multi-channel expansion here and instead run this now mono signal through a pan two. And now let's just check a few things. So we have hard left, hard right, in the middle, and just confirming that amplitude works. And some of our other arguments Yeah, so let's just go nuts here and dump a full plate of randomness all over these arguments. And for carrier and modulator frequency and modulator amplitude, there are really no, you know, dangerous values. It's just one oscillator controlling the frequency of another oscillator. So extreme values might give you some glitchy results, but for these three, it's basically anything goes. Now for overall amplitude, envelope, and pan, we'll just do some sensible random ranges here. Feel free to copy along with me or just chart your own path. And already we're getting a very pleasant variety here. And then finally, to really put the Super Collider platform to good use, let's use PBind from tutorial 10 to make an FM sequencer, specifying synthdef name and delta time. Let's do an eighth of a second for each event. And then just using what we already have. But uh, if we use these random number generators as they appear, then the first synth that PBind generates will initially be random, but these random values will then persist for every synth. So it'll sound like this. That's not really what we want. So the correct thing to do is convert 
these language side random number generators into their pattern equivalent objects. So this is what I'd consider to be a very entry level introduction to FM in SuperCollider. Feel free to go absolutely crazy on these numbers and see what kinds of sounds and patterns and textures you can make. You know, maybe stretch out the duration of the envelope to create a drone texture or use more predictable patterns instead of these random ones. Maybe you can also vary the time between events so it's not always one eighth of a second. But one thing we cannot do very easily with this code is play a tune, you know, like create a specific melody. This is because in FM synthesis, neither the carrier frequency nor the modulator frequency directly corresponds to the pitch that our brain perceives. The pitch we perceive, and also whether we actually perceive a clear pitch at all, is the result of a more complex relationship between carrier frequency, modulator frequency, and modulator amplitude. So we'll continue this conversation in the next video where we'll back up a few steps, dive a little deeper, unpack all these numbers, figure out what they mean, and give ourselves a more robust understanding of the principles behind classic FM and how to implement them in SuperCollider. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you have some fun making these FM bleeps and bloops, and see you next time.